Welcome to a very muggy day here in Daniel's shop, but we do have a pile of maintenance to do to the E46 here. Uh, we've got, let's see here, uh, inner and outer tie rod ends and uh, steering rack boots. Here we have a oil level sensor and then some rear trailing arm bushings. This is a very, very common thing. Almost every E46 needs these. Uh, and I also got the FCP Euro limiters to make them last a little bit longer. Apparently this setup is better than poly for daily driver duties. If you're actually doing a race car, you might want poly, but for my cases, some limb forder with the limiters will be good to go. And this apparently is the tool to remove said bushings. And then of course we have an oil change as well. So what we're actually dealing with here is here by the rear wheel, way up in there, that is the bushing. So that plate comes down and this will affect alignment. As you can see, it's slotted. So this whole plate, uh, this is the rear, uh, this affects the rear toe. And uh, so a lot of people are commenting on how my front tires are really worn. That's because they were on the rear. These tires have maybe a couple thousand, or not a couple thousand, maybe 10,000 miles on them at the most. And they are down to the wear bars from being on the back of this car. So that is, uh, that is what these bushings can do to you when being worn. Also, the car tram lines like absolute mad. If there's anything like lines on the road, the car pulls and follows it. And I think that is also due to the rear trailing arm bushings. And then we're also doing the inner and outer tie rods here. Pretty simple. And the boots, uh, just because new boots seemed like a good idea. Uh, and the oil sensor is under here somewhere. We'll have to take this off, but that is very, very simple. It's just a bunch of these. I think those are 13s and off it comes. Yes, I know my oil pan leaks. It'll get fixed at some point. I will uh, drop the entire subframe down and do both motor mounts and the oil pan gasket as well as taking care of the oil pump. Uh, I think it's a screw or bolt or something that will occasionally back out on these cars. So I'll get that all taken care of and kind of just future proof it a bit. It's kind of neat looking at all of the uh, parts that I've replaced under here, you know, sway bar, uh, bushings, the uh, control arms, lollipops, all that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's get something going here. Yay. Luckily on this car, these tie rods are pretty much as easy as it gets. Uh, it's just, stick an adjustable wrench on there and let's see, uh, righty tidy, lefty loosey is still usually the same. How did I already tear my glove? That's genuinely impressive. Yep, and then off it comes. And I'm gonna be doing a new boot and stuff as well, so. All this can go. All new things for the BMW. Ooh, this is the one that's bad. Okay, that's, that's really good news though. So that's my smoking gun. I'm so stoked now because this car is gonna drive so much better. Yeah, it's got, it's real loose. It's got a little bit of play in it. Junk. Already did the tie rods on one side just so that I have some vague idea what I'm doing, but these are just straight from FCP Euro, so they've got a lifetime replacement. Uh, looks nice. I mean, I, I don't know much about uh, tie rod ends to really pass judgment on their parts here. Inner and outer comes pre-assembled, except you have to disassemble it immediately, so whatever. And it comes with a new nut. It moves really nice, which is cool. And what's neat is that most tie rods I've seen, not that I have a ton of experience, have just a jam nut and you jam it up against. This actually has a sliding collar that pinches down on the threads. Now some would call that over-engineering and they'd be right, but it is cool. So we're gonna have to take this off though so that we can fit the new uh, boot over here which I also have in this very fashionable box. I actually love that design. So just to make it to the alignment shop, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take a tape measure and I'm gonna straighten that ball joint out. We're gonna measure from here to here. And we're gonna try and set this as close as we can to the existing one, just so that I don't completely tear up my tires on the four mile drive from here to the alignment rack. It's, it's definitely not precise, but it's, it's, it's what we got, so. A 
torques, but here is 100 plus 10 foot-pounds. Um, I weigh 150, and I'm not very strong. None of that's relevant. Just thought you'd like to know. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the Guten Tight spec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I just got assaulted by my tie rod. <clears throat> yeah, it's fine. Where did go? It's in that one. Oh. Uh, the nut's directional. You want the chamfered face facing up. All right, there, we're done. It's good to go down the road. See you later. So the tie rods are on, everything's tightened down good enough to get us to the alignment shop. Well, it's tightened down all the way and aligned good enough to get us to the alignment shop. And we've got these boots on here. I gotta go to the parts store and get the special pliers to clamp these down. What these are is they're kind of like ratcheting clamps. You kind of set them in a base position and then you crimp them down into their final, final tension uh, by it's just a pair of jaws like this. It's, it's pretty simple, you'll see when we do it. But, so that's all good to go. Now we're ready to move on. I guess we'll just start working our way back along the car and we'll get this out of the way, drain the oil, and replace the uh, oil level sensor, which has been a problem on this car literally since I got it. I just haven't gotten around to doing anything about it. So this is gonna be like a bunch of 13s, I think. And this panel comes out super easy. You gotta stop hitting yourself. No! And there's our sensor. It looks like it's held on with three tens. A little electrical connector there. Hey, it's hot. And the connector's a little stuck. Why is it hot? I don't know. There we go. Connector looks to be in good shape. Got it. Not too shabby. Make sure to grab a new crush washer out of the box. My oil filter came with a new one and make sure the old one isn't still stuck here or you'll have some nasty oil leaks. It's a thing. Now I gotta find somewhere to put this. And there it is. I absolutely don't understand how this works, but I don't need to. I just need to put it on. Just stick it in the hole. I remember reading that if the car first starts up and you immediately see a low level light, that doesn't mean you actually have low oil. That means that the sensor's gone bad. That's its indication of that. I guess it won't actually give you a legitimate low oil reading until after the car's been running for a minute, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because then you would have already ruined your engine. So what is the point? Got to use the uh, the calibrated fingers. If you're married, you already have these. Here we go. More shiny parts. Now we got to put that humongous panel back up here. My my jeans go in stages. All my jeans are like that. They go in stages. Like I get new jeans. I'm like, great. These are my nice jeans. Where these were. And then like I accidentally wear them out into the shop twice. It's like, well, I guess that's it then. There's no coming back. We got the bushing replaced on the other side, again, so that we know what to do and what not to do. It went perfectly, no problems happened whatsoever, no tools definitely got broken. We did not shear off the end of our bushing installer tool and then have to kind of jimmy it to make it work. That never happened, it's absolutely nonsense. So, um, this is actually really straightforward. First, you grab your flashlight instead of your knife. Uh, I've just popped these little clips so that these wires aren't going to get caught in the way because this is going to come down. Don't want to snag these wires and break them. My watch says I'm doing a workout. I guess that's not entirely incorrect. So then we just go up here and it's three, what are these, 18s? Okay, that does not fit. Okay, and down comes the controller. There's a brake line bracket back here that needs undone. Reminds me, we need to put that back on the other side. <laughs> there, now that has plenty of slack. You also, you only want to do this one side at a time. And the reason for that is, is there's preload involved 
with the relationship of the control arm to the bracket. And I'll show you what I mean by that, because you can see right here, the bushing doesn't go into the body, it goes into this bracket that we just unbolted. And the relationship between that horizontal surface and this changes how much tension is going to be placed on that bushing at various right house heights. Now, if you're doing poly bushings, those rotate inside of everything and it, there is no preload involved. But for OEM bushings like this, you need to have that set. It looks like it's level. The, this is level with the top surface, is per parallel to the top surface of the control arm, which makes sense because you expect that to be the neutral position. You don't want there to be any twisting loads on the bushing when it's in that position or you'll have premature wear and all sorts. So that means now I can actually button up the other side, but uh, well, next thing you guys see will be me continuing to take this apart. So the next step is just to get the, uh, the bolt out of there. And I think I'm gonna do that from this side. that bracket and there's our bushing yeah it's not the healthiest looking thing in the universe so now we got to get our special tool and pull that out of there so this is the MIS tools uh, bushing remover pretty simple some all thread and whatnot and this goes in like that uh, you'll see here of these rubber pieces there's uh there's tabs here you just kind of want to line that up so that it's not hitting those i guess though now that i say it out loud it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's coming out anyway who cares and i think generally with tools like this you're not supposed to use impacts you're supposed to use like a really long uh ratcheting breaker bar but being the sophisticated gentleman that i am and being very impatient i just don't care set to loosen. It, it works phenomenally well. It's well worth the money. Absolutely no frustration with like getting a, a universal kit to work or anything like that. It just happens. And there's our old pushing. So, what we did a while ago was we took the new bushing and we stuck it in the freezer so it'd shrink down a little bit. Uh, so now I think I'm gonna hit this with some heat. I'm also gonna clean up. You can see in here, there's a bunch of rust and, and gunk inside this surface. I'm gonna clean that up with an emery cloth or a, a scotch Bright pad and get that all nice and ready for the new one to come in. Probably gonna hit it with some heat as well. Uh, blow torch for a few minutes just to try and grow the inner diameter just make everything a little bit easier and we will get the new bushing thrown back in. This isn't a very hot flame, so I don't think this is gonna end up doing much for me, but it makes me feel good. Just don't point it towards the fuel tank, which is right there. Okay, that's nice and hot. Uh, only note here is that the bushing goes in this way because there is a chamfer there. Now we use this part of the tool uh, and again, it fits kind of in, it's got a recess here that this fits into and it just locks in place really nice. And that pulls this way. Something like that. And then we'll crank down on it. And the problem here is that this takes multiple hands, so. <laughs> oh, fucking. Okay, keep pulling. Keep pulling. So at that point, what was happening is the outer metal sleeve was hitting on the tool itself, so I reversed it and flipped it around. So now it's in a similar orientation to how we uh, removed the bushing and we can get it the last quarter of an inch or so. I actually got it going the right direction this time. That's hot. Whoa. <laughs> How was my leg? The other thing we discovered is that when you're prying down, uh, your, your spring self removes. So. 
you're going to hold down on that again and I'll move the spring back into place. There we go. It's just like that. All right. Assembly is reverse removal, except we're adding some parts this time. These are rear trailing arm bushing limiters. They go in and keep the uh, deflection to a minimum to keep from wearing out the bushing prematurely. And they're pretty easy to install. You take the bracket, and in they go. It's pretty obvious which way they go. So then you just have a smooth surface there, which doesn't allow for any rotation of the uh, control arm, or at least lessened rotation of the control arm. And then this slips over the bushing. And it's a little bit of a finagle. There it is. I'm not sure what the logic was between having the nut on the inside of the assembly when we took it apart, but I'm putting the nut on the outside this time so I can actually tighten the nut with the impact and hold the bolt with the, uh, the wrench. It makes more sense to me that way. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's reinstall our spring for a second time. This one? Yeah. definitely a two-man operation where uh, we have to lift up on the control arm and get the bolts back in. I don't know if we'll be able to film that very well at all because I'll be in the way. You know, you gotta get the front two in first because relative to the body, this bracket is gonna be hanging down like this. So you get the first two in first to bring it up enough that you can start to thread the back one in. Start them all by hand first so you don't strip any of them out because I'm sure that there's no saving those once they're cross-threaded. <laughs> All right, it's bolted up. The lines are all tied back down. We've got the brake lines in here again. So now it's really just uh, throw the wheels on, head to the alignment shop, fill it with oil. That part's important. And we will have used up all of our parts. Before we drop the car down, we got to get these little zip tie things done up. I actually bought a tool for this from O'Reilly's, but it was garbage. So I got these uh, Irwin end nippers. And let's see here. perfectly. <laughs> comes in from out of frame, like, <laughs> yes. Right. I do need to get like an actual socket for this though. Also, yes. My battery died, but sad times. The inner tie rods did not fix the play in my steering. It's still about that much, just completely, completely loose. And it's absolutely infuriating. So, uh, amazingly, just by measuring the inner and outer tie rods, the steering wheel still points straight. But I think my uh, I think my toes a little messed up. The car just kind of all over the place. But the rear feels fantastic. I am so stoked to get this thing actually aligned and uh, see if we can do something about the steering play and really, really feel what this car is supposed to be like. But uh, right now. I'm picking up Tyler. We're going to head to uh, McConnell Air Force Base here in Wichita, Kansas, where they actually have a hobby shop that has an alignment rack. So we're going to throw this thing up there. We're going to see if we can adjust some preloads on this uh, steering rack, maybe see if we can take the slop up that way. If not, Tyler actually has an E46 steering rack sitting in his garage. And we're going to throw that in. I think it might be more turns lock to lock than my ZHP one, so the car won't feel as sporty but at least I won't have a whole bunch of play when I go drive to uh, Minneapolis to visit some family here in a couple weeks. And then I can send my, uh, my ZHP rack off to be rebuilt. But uh, I don't want to do that for a thousand miles. <laughs> it's, it's really infuriating. It's specifically, specifically designed to annoy me personally. So every E46 in the world, except for mine, has a 17 millimeter 
um, right here for adjusting preload. Let me see if I can get my flashlight. Mine instead has an internal triple square with like an external 16 point. Um, let's see here. Internal triple square with an external thing. And so what we did was we grabbed a one and one eighth wrench, put it on there, gave it a 90 degree twist, and now there is no more play in the steering. I've literally never heard of another instance of the uh, free play adjustment actually fixing a play issue in an E46. Everyone else who goes chasing a worn rack ends up just replacing the steering Weibo, but it looks like in my case I legitimately just have a rack that was out of adjustment. And so now it seems good to go. We can get this buddy on the alignment uh, rack over there and fix my absolutely horrendous toe and whatnot. But my nice ZHP rack gets to stay. I am super stoked. It is the next day again. Hopefully we can actually see now, but let me see here. Uh, there we go. So we can see there, that's the uh, preload adjuster, if it focuses. There it is. Um, unlike pretty much everything I've ever seen, the outside is actually not the lock nut. That big outside one and an, one and an eighth, one and a quarter inch uh, 12 point is uh, actually what sets the tension. So when we set the tension when we were doing the alignment, we cranked down on that thinking we were locking it in place and what we actually did was crank it down way too far. And I did realize at that point that uh, this rack is just toast. Uh, it is definitely looser in the middle than it is everywhere else. So I'm gonna need to get a new rack. It's about $450 because this particular car has the special rare uh, ZHP rack. And according to Rack Doctor, Rack Doctor, there is actually a bunch of differences there. So if I want this thing to drive like it did new and do justice to the ZHP uh, uh, trim level, then I gotta shell out $450 for that rack specifically. For comparison, a non-ZHP rack is like $200. Uh, at any rate, I got this moved somewhere I think will be a nice compromise between binding and being way too loose on center. And then I marked it with a grease pencil just to see if it... Uh, moves around any and then of course we got a good look at all our nice new parts we've got the new bushings that we did there we've got our uh, very dirty uh, coolant expansion tank I did forever ago because I spilled coolants all over it and then we've got all my new pulleys and tensioners and stuff and a very leaky oil pan that I swear I'll get to at some point but let's get this car back on the ground using my brand new my brand new Harbor Freight low profile jack this is the steel one because the aluminum ones aren't quite as low profile and this still barely fits under the nose of that car uh, to allow me to use these center jack points so uh, 10 out of 10 do recommend but also real quick there's one more thing uh, that I'd like to do here All right, I've been driving it around for a little bit and it's still, it's still loose, but it's not clunking. There's not a clunk clunk when I move side to side. And I take back what I said earlier, this rack is definitely worn in the middle. I mean, uh, 250,000 miles, you figure the fluid probably hasn't been kept up on. These things demand synthetic ATF uh, in their power steering system. So, but it, it's not annoying. It's, it's not like loose to an annoying extent. I can live with this for a little while, but I'll definitely want a new rack eventually. But, but what's amazing is the difference that the rear trailing arm bushings made. I'm not crashing over bumps as much anymore, and the car isn't tramlining at all. This thing used to follow every little groove in the road. It would yank the steering wheel there, and I am told that this is mainly due to worn rear trailing arm bushings. It's amazing the amount of difference that uh, suspension components in the rear can have on the way the car steers, but at any rate, this thing is so much better now. And the alignment is dead on, of course, because, you know, I, 
I do I do a good job apparently <laughs> of course it took me twice as long as it would take a shot but uh, you know overall I think I'm pretty satisfied with the state of affairs that was a pretty great uh, upgrade here to the BMW just in a weekend and uh, I think it's about ready for my trip I'm uh, pretty excited I might lube up a few seals around the door and the sunroof just to eliminate a couple of little uh, rattles and pops and noises but other than that I think we're good thanks for watching <laughs>